Hello and welcome to another edition of Luminar Coffee Break. I'm your host, Vanelli. Now, our topic today is not going to be as sexy and exciting as developing a ton of images. It's understanding the user interface. Now, the reason why I'm doing this is after talking to several of my friends and giving demonstrations on them, the interface is extremely intuitive, but there are a few things that they've asked questions on, and I thought I'd relay that to you, all right? So let's dive right in. And again, if you have questions during this episode, please leave them in the comments, and don't forget to hit that thumbs up. All right, so when you, when you first launch Luminar, typically you end up with a blank um, catalog. So there's no images there, and what we need to do is add either a folder of images or single images to this catalog, all right? So there are three ways you could use Luminar. So you can use Luminar as a standalone program, which we're doing right now, as a plugin for Lightroom or for Photoshop, or you can use it strictly as a single image editor. Let me show you what I mean by that. So if I only want to use this as a single image editor, let me come over here, catalog. I'm pretty sure I made a blank one. Oh, I did. So here's a blank catalog. So there's no images in this catalog. All right? So if I want to use it strictly as a single image editor, then I would come over here to this plus icon and edit a single image. From here, um, we'll just grab any image. Let's see. Here, let's just grab this one. And I can bring it in. And from here, I can continue with my regular uh, developing process. Um, I can come over here to the, the templates. Let's see. Um, let's grab. Uh, okay, let's grab a close up one. That looks good. I like that one a little bit better. All right, we'll, we'll stick with this one. So. So I give you more real estate. So now I grabbed and started out with just a simple quick edit. I can come back over to my edit tools and I can continue, you know, enhancing the photo to my heart's content. Here's all of my history, what I've done to it. And once I'm finished, I can export this image either to my hard drive, to um, uh, offsite like Google, Google Docs or Google Drive or Dropbox. So once I export it, now I have the option. Since it's not in my catalog of folders here, it still is in my single image editing um, folder up on top. It's not a duplicate. It's just a reference on where this image is. If you're done with it and you don't want to keep it you know, in your, if you don't want to keep it in your editing um, profile, then I'm going to show you how we can just remove it. There we go. So I'm right. I'm going to right click on it and remove from single image editor. And now again, I have a blank um, catalog. So that was one way. If you want to use it as a single image editor, if you're going to use it as a Photoshop or a Lightroom plugin, it's going to come in, do its routine, and then fire it back out so it's not going to save it in this catalog. For the majority of the people, they're using it as an actual standalone program. And let me back up where I was. We'll do this one. And in doing that, it's going to store all your changes, all your images, and everything into the catalog. You still have the option of using it as a single image editor right here. You know, or um, you could just bring images into the folders and then remove them. All right. So now that we understand the concept of it, what about those catalogs? Well, just like in Lightroom, do you remember when Lightroom came out and it was hard for people to understand what the libraries or the catalogs were? I want to make it real simple. Think of that as a database and all the changes you've made any flags or any ratings that you put on the image, 
the location of where that image is stored, and of course, any changes you've made to that image is stored in the catalog, not on the image. So the catalog is extremely important because that's going to hold all that information for you. It's not going to duplicate any of the images that you bring in. So here's where your catalog is located. File, catalog, and then I'm going to, I'm going to click either show in Explorer or show in Finder. Now, typically it's stored in your pictures folder. Personally, I like to create a folder outside of my pictures folder and I named it Luminar AI Catalog. From here, I just created a blank catalog, a coffee break, and then my photography. This way, when I want to look for a catalog, I know exactly where it is. Now, the question you should be asking is why not the pictures folder? So here's the pictures folder. For the majority of you that are so used to working with this, fine, leave it in your pictures folder. But what happens is inside your pictures folder, a lot of people put all of their photos inside there. So if you select that, your pictures folder, I'll come over here. If I select that right here, add folder, and I come over to C drive, I should have it already, no, right here, pictures folder. If I add that pictures folder to my catalog, every folder and every subfolder inside this folder will be added. So what does that mean? Well, look, we have a couple catalogs of Luminar in here. So if I were to do that, all of these preview images are going to be added to the other catalog too. So you have to be very careful when you're adding images to your catalog, make sure they're images and they're not, you know, the backup files or the cache files. All right. So that's why, like I said, I like me personally, I like to create a, a folder outside of my pictures and I drop it in there. All right. So let me cancel out of this. Let's see if there's any questions so far. Good. Julie, Julie asked, good question. Can you have more than one catalog? And the answer to that is absolutely. So you have to decide on your strategy on how you want to um, proceed. Um, some of my friends will have a catalog in Lightroom, for example, of every of every uh, wedding they've ever photographed. So each wedding has their own catalog. Now, to me, that's kind of excessive. I would like to have one catalog. Let's say, because I work with portraits, models, 18 and above. Second catalog could be models, uh, 17 and under. Maybe another catalog, sports photography. So you can have as many catalogs as you want. Just remember, all those edits are stored in that catalog. So if you open up a catalog and you don't find your image, and you're like, oh man, I know I have my image somewhere. Let me just re-add it again. Those, Im those edits will not be applied to that catalog. So to answer that question again, is you have to decide your workflow. Me personally, I was a one catalog person until Rich Harrington kind of convinced me in, into um, having smaller catalogs because it, it just it makes the, the, the program run faster and I'm able to get, get rid of the clutter. I don't have all these other images to sidetrack me. All right? So I hope that answers your question there. Um, let's see. One moment. Um, <laughs> okay, good. So, um, since there seem to be no op options available, back to the video. Let me, yeah, Dave, I'm trying to understand what, what you meant. Um, oh, oh, I see. Thank you. <laughs> Kai, Kai, thank you so much. I'm so sorry. I thought you meant what we were talking about until I read up a little bit further. You're all set. Um, 
Good. Oh, perfect. And Dave, thank, see, this is what's so cool about this. You guys are taking what I'm talking about and your brains are thinking, okay, great. Well, now how am I going to search on that catalog? And David, you're right. If you have multiple catalogs and, and you need to do a search, well, you have to search individual catalogs. So it depends on your workflow. I know that if I work a lot with sports, I'm only going to focus on these sports, but you're right. What would happen if I, let's, let's say we use Lewis um, Morris as one of my examples. I've used him for sports many a times. He's a phenomenal athlete, but then at the same time, I also did private photo shoots for him for his, let's say, senior, um, when he graduated from high school, let's say when he achieved a special award. So those are elsewhere. So doing the multiple catalog routine, well, shoot, I have to remember, where did I put Lewis in that catalog? So that's why it's important to figure out your workflow. And do you want multiple catalogs to where you have to search individual ones or have one giant catalog and search that way? Now, my friend Richie Acevedo, for his weddings, when he shoots that wedding, he's done. When, he's, when he delivers all of those images to that client, Rarely does he ever have to go back and find those images again. So he has it down to a system. For him, multiple catalogs are great, but that's something you have to look into. All right? Let's see. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Good. Having images saved on external drives, perfect. So if you have images on external drives, now, um, I am, there we go. I am a Drobo ambassador, so I I, I, I teach three to one backup. You know, three copies of your data, two stored locally, one stored off site. I am a huge fan of a Drobo, or even if you went to Synology or um, I'm trying to think, Western Digital. So those are called a RAID system. If you have that many hard drives, it's best to put them into an enclosure. This way. It'll show up as E drive or whatever drive you want as one big drive. And now you have all of them in there. So if you're at that stage in your photography, do you have more than four terabytes, actually more than six terabytes of data, look into a RAID system that you can put them all on there. If you don't want to go that route and it's okay, then make sure you label each of those hard drives. So inside Lumina, you know, Hard drive one, these are the images on there. Then when you plug in that hard drive, they'll appear in Luminar. When you unplug them, you'll get that little um, sign in the top left, the warning sign that tells you they can't find it. And that's because it's off of the external drive. All right? So I hope that helps you on that end. Good, let me get back to here. Good. Good job, guys. Good. I'm really loving saving catalogs well. Yeah, you're right. I, I've gone that route too, Ralph. Um, or if I deleted the catalog by accident. Well, great. All right, so now we have the catalog. It's funny. I did the same episode for our, our Insiders program, and catalogs was number one on that list that people want to get the mystery out of. All right, and so while I'm here, I might as well do the mystery. Let's go back to the catalog and show an explorer. Now, the most important um, file in this catalog is right here. This Luminar AI, the, the extension, that is your catalog. Whatever you do, protect that with your life because that, that stores all your edits. For, for Mac users, you'll have another folder up here called history and history has all the history of everything you've done to those images so those two that folder and that Im that file are crucial make sure you back those up put them off on another hard drive just in case something happens you want to make sure you have those two safe the other two the other three in this case here you could delete those. If you're having issues with your catalog, 
let's say the images aren't redrawing, you could have an issue with the preview cache. Maybe you shut the system down, turn it back on, shut it back down, and it didn't have enough time to do the preview cache properly. Sometimes just deleting that and letting it rebuild itself fixes that issue. If it starts to move a little slower than expected, you may want to delete the, the cache folder. And what's neat also is typically Luminar does all this for you. So right now this image here or this catalog on the 21st, on the, on the, I'm sorry, on the 6th, the 3rd, the 5th, and the 6th, it created its own backup for me. So I didn't have to worry about creating the backups. It did it. So if it wouldn't open, it would go to that one backup on the 6th. Doesn't work. Okay, go shut down, reboot, try the 5th. If that didn't work, shut down, go back up. The 3rd, boom, now it's working again. So it kind of takes care of itself, which is pretty cool. But like I said, that those can be erased. But what can't be erased is that right there, that file. And if you're a Mac user, history. All right. So let me get back here. Let's check some more questions. Good. Um. Exactly. Good. Good. Cut. Good. Good. So, so again, you're right. Multiple catalogs makes it harder to find images. Um, and then, again, multiple catalogs makes it harder to find them. As for tagging images, you can't tag them yet inside uh, Luminar AI. Um, you can do basic search here. So if I, let's say I wanted to find all my NEF files. Well, there's two of them that they found. So these are NEF files. Um, if I wanted to search, let's say, JPEGs, they found 106 JPEGs. I know that's called butterfly. Let's say I want to search on butterfly. It'll show me one image, and there it is. So it's not a robust, you know, oh, wow, this is so amazing search. It's a basic search for the basic needs that you need, all right? So now that we have that set, let me go back to coffee break. All right, so catalog was a huge one. Now, the next one, and I can't stress this enough, and then we'll end it with this, templates. Templates are the nuts and bolts of AI right now. I, I'm in love with the concept of it. What it's doing is this. All the looks you've created in the past, or all the new templates that they're creating from this point on are stored in your templates folder. Now, if I click on the star icon, this is going to show me ones that have been purchased. These are the user templates I've created inside Luminar AI. Legacy, if I can click on it, there we go. Legacy are all the ones I've created in version 4 that I got to carry over into this one. If you didn't, if these don't appear for you, your old ones, that probably means you didn't have Luminar 4 installed on the machine when you um, installed Luminar AI. So the only way to get them back in is to uninstall Luminar AI. It's not that scary. Uninstall it, reinstall it, but make sure Luminar 4 is on that machine, and then it'll automatically find them and bring them over to here, all right? Now, why am I so excited about templates? When I get like in a creative slump or I'm not like 100% sure what I want to do to edit an image, templates come to the rescue. If I click on a template, it's going to give me, oh, look at that. It's going to give me a suggestion. I'm, and Soulful is one of my favorite ones, so I'll make sure I mark that. It'll give me a nice suggestion on what would make this look good? So in this case, it knows there's human hands in it. Um, if, if it were, let's do something more like this. It would know there's a person, there's a sky, there's rocks. Okay, so this is a landscape with a person in it. And then 
it'll give suggestions for that. So here, I love these suggestions. I can either take that suggestion, come over to edit, and then tweak it to make it my own, which let's do that real quick. Let's go to creative, make it a, a mat. Oh, I like that. Maybe not as much, right about there. Uh, we get a little color toning maybe. Let's see. Nope. Oh, because we converted it to black and white, so we don't have it, but that's fine. All right, I like it, but you know what? I do want to add just a little bit of film grain. There we go. All right. Before, after, beautiful. This will look like a beautiful engagement shoot. Then I can come down here. Save it as my own. Now, yes, soon you'll be able to edit this here. Right now, that's something um, tech, tech support knows about. So if I come back over to my templates and I look at the ones that I've created, here it is. And I'm going to rename it. Let me go back to it. Edit rename and I'm gonna call this black and white maybe um, engage all right and now I have it so now when when I have another engagement shoot I can remember oh yeah I remember what I do with that image that looks really cool let's do another one like that and boom there's my template and I'm ready to go. So it, it's taking looks and presets to a totally different level. So instead of you having to flip through thousands of looks, thousands of presets, thousands of templates, you're letting it analyze it for you and then giving you suggestions on what it feels, hey, this may be pretty good, and then you take those. And then after a while, you start creating your own favorites and now you have those set, all right? Let's check some of the questions here. Um, let's see. All right, Dima Z. Okay, can we export straight to a parent folder without the need to search or browse for an export? Okay, yeah, so with the exporting, so let's say I'm, we're right here in the catalog, all right? So notice I don't have anything open. If I just come over here to export, export to disk, here it is, all right? So yeah, I can't export it. Just right click, export, here it is. Or if I click on an image, here's the shortcut key. Shift, Control E, or is it Shift, Command E for Mac? And then you can export your image. I hope that answered your question on that end. Good, let's see what else we got. All right, um, let's see. If your catalog has raw files and I edit, do you recommend I export back to my catalog? Oh, as a JPEG or as a TIFF? Good, now that's a really good question. And again, this is gonna be a preference that you gotta come up with. Um, let's say a lot of times I'll create a folder here. Let's just, um, let's say coffee break. I'm gonna create a folder inside coffee break. And these can be called um, to be process. So these are to be processed. Now I can create another folder. I do that all the time. I can create another subfolder and these can be called processed. So what I like to do um, is I can either make these albums or in my folders. In fact, uh, let me step back for a moment. You see this to be processed? That really should have been an album. So to be processed, I apologize. There we go. All right, so 
To be processed is an album. And the reason why I'm saying that is this. If I made it a folder, well then if I grab this and I drag and drop it into this here, now it's part of that album. It doesn't duplicate it. It just gives me a reference of where it is. It stays exactly in the folder it was in. If I were to move it over here to be to the to the to be processed folder right here, the issue then is it actually removes it from whatever hard drive it's in or whatever folder it's in, it puts it into a brand new folder. So I like to use albums for my to be process. So if I figure, okay, I want that, that, and let's say this one here. So now I know these three have to be processed. Once I process them, now you have the option. You can export them to the process folder. So, or whatever folder you want in them. By doing that, now you now they're in this they're in the same directory, the same folder that you have your, your images in. Now you could export it as a JPEG or a TIFF to the actual folder itself if you don't mind having the let's see if I have one here. If you don't mind having, let's say the original right next to the raw, then export it right back to that same folder. If you want to export it out to another you know, folder where you know that these have been processed, maybe upload to your website, social media, or store them on your computer as these are my processed photos, then that's another option, all right? So the whole key here is this. The goal at, at Skylum is to give you tools to help you increase and become more proficient with your workflow, not to bog it down. So if this works, let's say for us, but it may not work for you. You may say, no, Nelly, I like keeping them side by side, here's why. Perfect, then that's the route you go. Our goal is to make your life a lot easier when it comes to processing, all right? So let's see one more question. Yes. Okay, yes, Demo. So you can make it go straight to straight to the um, to that folder. So you can you can tell it. Let's say so this folder here, for example, is so this is in pho photography coffee break, and it's in the root folder of coffee break. So if I were to export this right now. I would have to tell it here where to go. So it doesn't automatically go into that particular folder for you. You have to search and put it where, where it is. All right? Great. Awesome. Well, guys, and the parent folder, yes. All right, guys. Well, hey, thank you so much. This has been extremely helpful. Um, we're we're going to try something a little bit different on Mondays. We're going to try to do more of a technical side of Luminar to where, you know, where is your catalog folder or um, best installation tips or, you know, um, maybe SSD drive or where to store your, your Luminar catalog is a, it's a huge one um, and what type of hard drives would be good, what type of screen resolution. Some people were asking about Wacom tablets and about masking and stuff. Those are the things we can review on Mondays. Not every Monday, but majority of Mondays will be that. Angela, myself, and the, the rest of the team um, are trying to come up with the entire month of um, shows so you can go in, you can actually see which show will be when, and then if those shows, hopefully all of them will, if those shows pertain to you, you can capture those shows and you can attend them. All right? Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me. And I'll see you at the next coffee break.